Hello and welcome back to FCS Football and another episode of Premier League Preview. And what a week it has been in the Premier League. Obviously, we've had shocks, mainly coming from that West Ham versus Tottenham game with Manuel Lanzini scoring that last minute equaliser after Spurs found themselves 3-0 up in about 20 minutes. It was such an easy game for Tottenham. Gareth Bale came on, missed an absolute sitter and Tottenham capitulated and they did a Tottenham, they did a Spurs. It was a Spursy result. They were winning it and then they threw it. Anyway, let's get on to this week's fixtures. And first off, we have Aston Villa versus Leeds. As mentioned before, Aston Villa beat Leicester and are currently 100% winning ratio in the Premier League. Leeds lost to Wolves in what was a close game. Um, Wolves got a lucky deflection for their goal, if I remember correctly. I thought this was going to be a close one. But I do see Villa edging it and continuing their 100% record. I think Jack Grealish has looked incredible this year. I think Oli Oli Watkins has looked very good. And I think he will continue to find the goals. And Grealish will will also continue to play at this incredible, incredible level he is at the moment. And we'll get a few assists. I'm going for a 2-1 Aston Villa win. Next up, we have West Ham versus Manchester City. Man City are going to win this game, aren't they? West Ham did brilliantly to come back from 3-0 down against Tottenham. However, Man City are a different animal to Tottenham, really. Um, I, I think Tottenham played look, have played and looked good this season, um, especially since that that poor, poor showing in the first game of the season against Everton. They've looked better and they've looked improved. However, they're not a team like Manchester City who can and will just dominate the game, dominate the ball and can put you up, put the goals in past you. And I think they're going to do that. And for all all the positives recently for West Ham, um, the amount of goals they're scoring being the main one, really, I don't see them being able to breach this Manchester City side. Uh, They are good in the Champions League last time out, Man City as well. And I think this is going to be an easy 3-0 victory for the citizens. Fulham versus Crystal Palace. Now Fulham have looked quite bad. Well, Palace have looked a little uninspiring, but they've not looked terrible. And I think that that is why Palace are going to win this game. I think Fulham rely a lot on what Mitrovic does bring, and that is goals. And obviously, <laughs> you want your striker scoring goals, but I think it's the support he, he needs he doesn't quite get enough and because of that I don't see Fulham be able to win this game I'm going to go for a 2-0 Crystal Palace win and I think Mitchie Batshuayi could get on the goal score sheet I think he's looked good that Therese Mitchell at left back has looked fantastic in my opinion and yeah like I said I'm going to go 2-0 Crystal Palace Michael but that one's for you mate next we have the biggest game of the weekend Manchester United versus Chelsea and Chelsea coming to this game off the back of a disappointing draw against Sevilla and a disappointing draw against Southampton last time in the league um, where they, they leaked goals. Edouard Mendy, I believe, was back in goal for the Champions League, so he should be back for the Man United game. However, Manchester United, obviously, we just we just beat Paris Saint-Germain. The watch along for that will be on my channel if you would like to go watch that. And we were incredible against PSG. And we were really good against Newcastle. And I liked, I said in my preview, and my, no, sorry, not preview, my watch along in the Newcastle match that this that was the perfect game to springboard into this incredibly tough run of fixtures. And it was that. And I think we're playing well. We, we're looking good. And this could be our, with our season finally started, hopefully. So... If you, want to, if you want to hear more about what, what I think about this game, make sure you check out my match preview, which will be uploaded tomorrow. Um, link will be in the description, but I'm going to go for a 2-1 Manchester United win. Liverpool versus Sheffield United. Liverpool have lost a key, key man in, um, in Virgil van Dijk. And 
I don't think that's going to impact them so much for this game. Obviously, it's a massive loss for the season, and I feel like that could make them that will make them drop a few levels, and that could Im eventually impact on them winning the winning the league, winning the Champions League because he, he does look like he's out for the rest of the season. Do I think Jordan Pickford should be retrospectively banned or whatever? No, I don't. Should he be sent off? Yes. I think Liverpool fans and players, like what, what Genie Wine Adam said was ridiculous. They, no, no one goes out on that pitch to try and hurt Virgil van Dijk. It just happened. Pickford went to try and save the ball and smother the ball and unfortunately he did just clatter van Dijk and has injured him. Should should Pickford be banned for that? No, he shouldn't. He, he paid football. Van Dijk's done awful challenges in the past. Has he been banned? No, he hasn't. But obviously against Ajax, they also lost Joel Matip, which again is going to be a big loss for them. By the sounds of it and looks of it, they're going to have to play uh, Fabinho in at centre-back alongside Joe Gomez, which both are very good centre-backs, despite Fabinho being more of a the defensive midfielder, but that does also mean they do lose that DM in Fabinho in the midfield. Although Thiago can come into that um, position, and obviously they're different players. Fabinho is a winner of the ball, while Thiago is more of a playmaker from that role, from that deep role. However, I don't think Sheffield United have been good enough this season. Obviously, they only drew to Fulham last time out. And that was only thanks to a penalty, which they was also fortunate Fulham missed one. So I do see Liverpool winning this game and it's going to be a free goal margin. I'm going 3-0 Liverpool. Southampton versus Everton. Everton have looked absolutely fantastic this year under Carlo Angelotti and Dominic Carver lewin is on absolute flames. He's been fantastic this season for the Toffees. And I think... This run's going to continue, and I think they're going to stay top of the league, and I think they're going to beat Southampton. Southampton haven't looked the same team they did last season, especially after lockdown, and Southampton need to pick it up if they're going to really push on this season. Um, they obviously drew last time to Chelsea, conceding three goals. That's not like Ch Southampton to concede three goals in a game. Um, yes, they scored three, but it was against Kepa Arizal Balaga. Kepa is awful. He's an awful goalkeeper. So I'm not. I think anyone could probably score three past Kepa on on their when they're playing well and creating chances. And I think Southampton they are getting better, but I think Everton have are just too good. Um, they're gonna miss Seamus Coleman. Uh, I believe he's still out after obviously he got injured against Liverpool in the Merseyside derby. But uh, obviously they are actually also out without Richarlison and James Rodriguez, isn't they? Richarlison was sent off for a horrific challenge on, was it Thiago? In the Merseyside derby. And James Rodriguez, I believe, is injured. But I am going to still go for that Everton win. And I'm going to go for a 1-0. Wolves versus Newcastle. Wolves beat Leeds last time out. Um, like I said, it was a fairly close game and I feel like they were quite lucky to win it. I believe it was a deflected shot that saw Jimenez, Jimenez's effort go on the net. However, Newcastle are just terrible. They are a terrible, terrible side. They were terrible last year and they're terrible this year. The only the only bright spark I have to say about Newcastle really is that they've got a goal scorer in Callum Wilson and they've got an absolutely amazing playmaker slash winger in Alan St. Maximin. And now if they're going to do anything this season, it's going to be thanks to them too. Them two absolute brilliant players. And I can see I can see him scoring against Wolves thanks to the, the, the brilliance of them too. However, I don't see him winning the game. I'm going to go for 2-1 Wolves win. Arsenal versus Leicester. Both play in the Europa League tonight or such tomorrow so both aren't going to be fully fully fit and raring to go at 100% especially depending on how much they rotate I feel like Arsenal can rotate more than Leicester because I feel like the squad depth is bigger at Arsenal Surprise, unsurprisingly really 
Um, I like both managers. I think Brendan Rodgers and Mikel Arteta are fantastic managers and they're doing really, really well with their current squads. But I do just see Arsenal pipping. I think Arsenal have looked the real deal this season. Well, I don't think Leicester have been amazing. Obviously, Leicester are also without a lot of key players thanks to injury. They obviously lost Chilwell to Chelsea this summer. I think Vardy might be injured still. Uh, but they, I mean, they are getting their squad back today. I don't know if Ricardo Pereira is fully fit yet. But I feel like Arsenal are just the better team and they have the better players. And I am going to go for a 1-0 Arsenal win. Brighton versus West Brom. Now, this is this is going to be a weird game. I don't think West Brom are great, but I think they're just going to sit behind the ball. Brighton, they, they play some nice stuff. Obviously, they, uh, they've played Manchester United and Chelsea and I think they're a better team in both games. Unfortunately, they lost both games. Um, but I think... Malpai's a good striker. I think Trossard is a really good player. He just needs to work on that shooting a bit. But he can, I mean, you can say he's unlucky against Manchester United to hit the post, both posts and the bar, but that's just poor finishing at that point. He had he had a couple of chances. Well, the one that hit the bar, he has to hit that on target for me. That was a sitter, really, all things considered, after he created such a great chance. And to hit the bar, I think that's, that's on him, isn't it? So, I think... Brighton have all the capabilities to win this game and to be a good side. However, I think West Brom are going to sit in deep, be be rigid and be hard to beat. And I think Brighton sometimes do struggle to break that break that down. So I, I can see both teams scoring. I think I can see a Pereira piece of magic for West Brom getting them a goal. Um, I do like the look of Carlin Grant from Huddersfield. I think he's a pretty good sign-in. And I'm going to go for a one all draw. And lastly, and finally, the last game of the week, we have Burnley versus Tottenham. Obviously, as I mentioned, Tottenham threw away a 3-0 lead against West Ham to draw 3 or all, while Burnley drew 0-0 to West Brom. Both coming to the game, off, off the, obviously, off the back of a draw. And I think... One team is going to win this game, and that's going to be Tottenham. Tottenham have looked like a good side, while Burnley haven't looked anything like their normal selves. They haven't. I don't think they've been hard enough to beat. And obviously, they don't look look at it in the goals either. I think Tottenham. They're a team that you can get at sometimes. I I think probably a bit mentally a bit there, a bit weak, and I feel like. But this Burnley team could probably get out. Chris Wood, he's obviously a, he's some he's he's a threat, and he's some someone you have to deal with well, or he's going to score, or he's going to create something. And I, I don't think Tottenham have got that. I don't. I think Darren Sanchez and Eric Dyer are both get atable, and especially if you put Chris Wood on Darren Sanchez, he's going to win a lot of balls. And for me, and I feel like. Spurs are get out of ball, but I do think Spurs will win this game. I'm going to go for a 2-1 Tottenham win. And finally, my player to watch for this week is going to be Liverpool's Trent Alexander-Arnold. I think I can see Trent... I can actually see Trent getting on on the score sheet. And I think all right, he's, going to, he's going to get an assist or two. I, I don't know, I just have that feeling that Trent's going to have a, an absolute world here against Sheffield United. I don't think Sheffield's look very good defensively. I can see him getting getting in with a goal or a few assists. Um, players also to watch, or such honourable mentions, does go to Sergio Aguero, who I think is going to score, score a goal or two against West Ham. Sterling maybe as well. And... Lastly, I will go Dominic Calvert-Lewin just because he's been absolutely phenomenal this season for Everton. Anyway, if you have enjoyed, make sure you hit that like button below. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you next time. Peace.